What we're going to cover today in precast, pre-stressed concrete connection and components follows an earlier seminar on parking garage design that covered functional design and the structural system design. But there, there are many considerations that we go through for the components and connections that put the system together. So we will be talking about that in today's session. We're going to have part one, we'll cover connections and, and discuss it. Part two, we'll discuss horizontal components. That's double T's, inverted T-beams, spandrel beams, slabs, and, spa and stairs that we use in garages. And then the third part, we'll cover the vertical components, precast columns, pre-stressed col uh, pre columns, ramp walls, shear walls, and stair walls. Objectives today are to provide an understanding of considerations for connection design for precast, pre-stressed concrete parking structures. We're going to look at load paths, anchorage to concrete, loading conditions, types of connections. We will try to provide an understanding for the considerations of horizontal components for pre-stressed precast pre-stressed concrete parking structures, particularly looking at double T's, inverted T-beams, spandrel beams, and flat slabs and stairs. And then finally, to provide an understanding of the consideration for vertical components for precast parking structures that include the interior columns, exterior columns, ramp walls, shear walls, and stair walls. When we get into the details of precast concrete, um, we look at our erection drawings and we get a, 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 a wide variety of every different connection and every different detail of how things are put together. And it can be a, a little bit intimidating to look at the level of all of the pieces. But at this level of design, we really have to attract or, or account for every nut and bolt and, and all of the parts that it takes to create the load pass between adjacent components. And so the details have to be just that, detailed and complete. Um, we start with the idea of ensuring that we are establish, uh, establishing the load path throughout the parking garage. ASCE 7 um, has a provision in the first chapter about pulling everything together. All parts of the structure between separation joints shall be interconnected to form a continuous path to the lateral force resisting system, and the connection shall be capable of transmitting the lateral forces induced by parts being connected. Any smaller portion of the structure shall be tied to the remainder of the structure with elements having strength to resist a force of not less than 5% of the portion's weight. Now this was, has been in ASCE, has been in the load standard for literally for decades. It caused a lot of questions and concerns when I was a young engineer because it looked like it was overriding all of the requirements for diaphragm designs. That is, if any smaller part had to be connected to the rest, then you couldn't be designing the connections between components for anything less than 5%. But the clarification was made. Uh, uh, we received a letter many, many years ago with the clarification that the diaphragm is actually considered part of the lateral force resisting system. And the intent here was that any remote part or component be connected at least to the diaphragm through this minimum force requirement, but it wasn't a requirement for the diaphragm itself. It certainly means that any remote beam or element that we have in the structure needs to be tied to the whole structure so that ultimately it's all, there's a load path for every part that runs down to the foundation for lateral and gravity support. Connections in precast concrete define the load paths. Behavior of the overall structural system is largely controlled by the connections. We have a lot of rigid bodies that happen to be linked through our connection. The connection stiffness and deformation capacity is as important as the strength of the connection. That is, it needs to respond to the entire environment 
that the structure is going to be subject to. And with parking garages as an unheated building with transient loads, moving loads of traffic running through it, those demands are actually beyond the definitions of specific loads that are given to us by the codes. 